Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits and welcome to my channel. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week I have a super cool technique for you that I learned how to do by mistake. Basically, a lot of the things I learned how to do that are aha kind of cool discoveries are the result of a mistake. And mistakes happen when you give yourself permission to play. When you just get out there with your gel plate and your supplies and you just don't have anything specific in mind, but you just play and experiment and try new things. So I'm going to show you what I learned by mistake and is now one of my favorite foam stamping techniques. Welcome back to the studio. Today I'm playing with two of my brand new Van Gogh collection foam stamps. I have the Starry Night Spirals and the Twinkling Stars and Moon. And you can see that they're very wet because I have them face down in a pile of wet paper towels off to the side of my gel plate. I'm a little messy as I've been practicing this technique before filming. Um, also, you can use those stamps in a dish basin of water if you don't want to get water and dirty paper towels all over your work surface. So you can always float the foam stamps in a basin of water to get them wet for this technique. Also, that is the best way to keep them clean. When you get acrylic paint on the surface of your foam stamps, you want to throw them in water as soon as you're done with them so that the acrylic paint does not dry on the surface. So the basin serves both purposes. Anyway, let's get started. So what I'm going to do is something that I learned by accident when I was messing around and experimenting with these foam stamps uh, when I first got them as prototypes. They were, I was keeping them wet in the paper towels so the paint did not dry on the surface of them. I stamped with them while they were wet and I got an amazing result that I'm going to share with you today. Serendipitously. So I'm going to put out two colors of nice dark night colors on my plate. So I'm going to be using ultramarine violet and golden fluid acrylic Payne's gray. You can see that the ultramarine violet is not only a very light color, but it's highly translucent, transparent, because you can see the black tick marks through the actual swipe of paint on the label of the bottle. You can see that the Payne's gray is less translucent because the tick marks are a little harder to see through that paint swipe on the bottle. So this is a nice combination because it's two dark colors, but we've got translucent and lighter with more opaque and darker. This is not considered completely opaque. It's considered partially opaque or halfway between translucent and opaque. Okay, so I'm going to put out just a little bit of each color, a couple of dots of it, tapping my bottle but not squeezing. That's the best way to get a little drop is to just tap it and not squeeze it. And now the paint's gray, again, tapping and not squeezing, coming around here. And then I'm going to use a two-inch brayer. I'm going to start with the paint's gray areas. It's a little hard to tell the difference on this messy plate. But I'm going to use, I'm going to try to spread these out so that you can have a little bit of each color rather than blending them together. So I'm using the two-inch brayer. I've spread out the paint's gray. And now I'm going to go into the ultramarine violet and spread that. And I think I could use a little bit more of that. So I'm just going to put a little dot right here and I'll carry that over to the lower corner here. And this is just giving me kind of a nice mottled dark night feeling with these two dark purpley colors. Okay. So I've got some old sheet music that I'm using for this because I like the idea of the song in the background. I'm going to start with the first example is going to be the twinkling stars and moon. This one works really well because it has some large flat uh, imprint areas. So I'm going to have that nice and wet and I'm going to press it into the plate. And I think that's a little too wet. So let's come back with a little bit less wet and I'm pressing and removing paint in a watery way. So it's going to be soft and hopefully very painterly, this effect. So again, pressing into the water and then pressing into the plate. And that should do it. And then we're going to take a full sheet of this fun patterned sheet music and print. Now, the more water or less water you use is obviously going to affect your print. The color choices you use will affect your print. So you just have to play with this and see what you get. But oh my goodness, this is lovely. It almost looks like a batik. 
Isn't that really lovely? I really went kind of crazy with the big moon and I didn't get too many stars, but you can see the effect and I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna try it again with the other stamp. But you can see the soft edge watery effect that you get with these stamps and how it looks batik. And then we can see the sheet music showing through. I really like that dark Payne's gray for this. So let's now add in uh, a little um, quinacridone nickel azo gold don't ask me why, with the Payne's Gray and see what we get with a little contrast of two colors. So I'm coming back again with the, I should have started with the light color with this brayer. That's all right. So blending the Payne's Gray and then blending the Azo Gold, which is going to come up a little bit like green in here probably because it's on the yellow side and it's mixing with the uh, blue of the Payne's Gray. So we have like a little modeled effect here again. And let's try with the same stamp again and kind of rotate it around a little bit better this time. So I'm going to take the wet stamp and press it and then press it again. Get a little more wet and press. And I am removing paint in the pattern of the stamp, but because it's wet, it's gonna give me a really nice soft edge. And again, you just have to play around with the amount of water that you use, how wet is your stamp, and your color combinations. So, okay, and I'm gonna get up here. So this time, hopefully I have a better variety and not so many of the same, same angle of the stamp. Again, you can see the water is beating it up and making it soft on the plate. I'm coming in with the sheet music and press. You can make this technique work with any foam stamps you have on hand, but I'm excited to let you know that my new line of Van Gogh inspired foam stamps, the Van Gogh collection, includes six brand new designs and um, two of them are the ones I'm featuring in this video, but six minus two is four. So that means there's four more that you can play with in the inspiration theme of Vincent Van Gogh. Oh, I do like that Azo Gold in there very much. So here we go. This one is a little more variety of angles of the stamp. It's important to rotate your stamp around, but look at that beautiful soft edge. We're curling up a little here. Look at the beautiful soft edge of that, almost like a batik with that foam stamp. Loving the combination of the Azo Gold with the Payne's Gray. That's really nice. Okay, so let's try. So this was the first one. I hit, the, I hit the moon part of it kind of, I don't like the pattern that I made, but I do really like the effect with the ultramarine violet and the Payne's gray and the damp stamp. And then of course the second one. Now let's try one more. And in this one, I'll use the Starry Night Spirals and we'll use, um, let's see, a slightly different color combo. Let's use the ultramarine violet with ultramarine blue. So we'll put out let me get a scrap sheet and see if I can get more of the moisture off the plate and some of that Azo Gold. So now the same thing, I'll put out a few bits of the Ultramarine Violet and then a few dabs of the Ultramarine Blue. And I will start my brayer in the light area. Well, I'm kind of overlapping. So and there's a little Azo Gold that's going to show up in there because we didn't change brayers. That's all right. Serendipity is good. This is how I figured out this technique in the first place. So getting the colors sort of blended out, but not blended together. I'll put a little more ultramarine down in this corner. So my goal is not to blend them together, but to kind of, that's why I'm using the two inch brayer so I can keep them sort of separate get some interesting color effects that way. Okay, that should be good. So now I'm going to take the Starry Night Spirals, damp again from being in the wet paper towels and press it down into the plate. And then I'm gonna, whoops, rotate it and press it. And I wanna make sure I keep rotating it. Get it damp again. Rotate damp, and so on. I'm going to rotate it and keep moving around to make sure I get the whole plate covered. So in essence, I'm adding water, but I'm also removing paint. 
And I'm gonna put the foam stamps, of course, face down in that wet paper towel so the paint doesn't dry on the surface and give it a minute. You can see the pattern sort of already appearing through the water. And we've got another piece of this great sheet music. And let's print. I think this is gonna be a lovely color combination. Oh my goodness, look at that. Beautiful soft edges on that print more so in one corner where there was more water, but everywhere, nice, soft, soft edges, almost like a batik. This is an amazing effect utilizing my two new foam stamps, the Starry Night Spirals and the Twinkling Stars and Moon. You could do this with any foam stamps you already have on hand, um, but I just wanted to show you my new line of foam stamps for joggles.com. So thanks for being here with me this week. Thanks for letting me share my accidental technique that I discovered and love. I want to give a big, huge shout out to my patrons, the people who subscribe to my Patreon page. Thank you from the bottom of my art heart because it is Patreon that allows me to present the YouTube videos for free. Um, if you're interested in Patreon, it's a month to month subscription. Come and go at any time. You're not obligated for any longer than 30 days. Um, and you have immediate access to all archived in-depth tutorials going all the way back to May or June of 2020. So um, big thanks to my patrons. Big thanks to you for being here and watching. I hope you'll consider subscribing. And please let me know what you think about this wet foam stamp technique. And also let me know in the comments if you've ever done something by accident that became part of your gel printing repertoire. So anyway, thanks again again for your support and I look forward to seeing you next week.